a vehicle that you and I could purchase at the local dealership for probably top of the line $45,000. And the taxpayer paid the same $250,000 and never did own the vehicle. They got the wrong equipment, ordered the wrong stuff, computers still in boxes, new vehicles. They'd push them out in what they called burn pits, and they just set it on fire, claim it as a loss, get more money for the right equipment or the right stuff they needed. Why would you need to order somebody else's wrong equipment just because somebody pays you to do it? And you burn it and destroy it. You got brand new trucks over there, and there's not even oil filters. So when the motor blows, what do you do? Buy a new truck and build the government. $75,000 truck, they wouldn't even have a spare tire to fit it. And we had to blow it up. And they didn't care how the burden did because the government's paying for it. We knew that every day that a vehicle broke down, we would have to destroy it. And these are maybe $80,000 vehicles, maybe $100,000. You know, they're expensive trucks. We're burning fuel in front of Iraqi people. We're not really doing anything to help and we just have to follow the orders. As a truck driver in the mail department, they'd send me to these camps with one bag of mail. That's risking my life just to deliver one bag of mail. Escort entire convoys where every flatbed truck was empty. The allegations come from 12 truckers complaining that the company was wasting government money by running empty trucks on the convoys and billing the government for them. And it seems senseless to travel up and down the road and taking a chance of losing your life when there wasn't no purpose in it. When you went up empty and you come back empty. The allegation I went to make a better life for my family. I always have a roof over their head and not have to worry about where their next meal's coming from. Sure it wasn't that fun with him gone. We missed him and all that stuff. I couldn't do stuff with him. Didn't have anybody to throw a baseball with, did you? I was going to take you fishing. If your mom was scared you'd fall in and get drowned, wouldn't she? Yeah. I went over there and I got my health messed up and got shot, bricked, knocked out, and everything else. I felt like not only I can make a decent living for my family and better myself, but I'll be doing something for my country, you know what I'm saying? I'm supplying the military and these guys where they can eat and help fight when we have to. But then, you know, you're looking and you're going up and down the road empty. Halliburton's charging the government for every camp they go by. And your buddy's getting killed for, un, for no cause at all. Not even as much as a Band-Aid on the truck. That's how Halliburton was making their killing and making their money is a legal way of stealing from the American citizen and the military. Halliburton is accused of hundreds of millions of dollars in improper charges. Pentagon auditors have found potential overcharges of $61 million. Now the numbers are apparently even larger than previously thought. Halliburton's unreasonable and unsupported bills exceed one billion dollars. If anybody's overcharging the government, uh, we expect them to repay that money. It's been proven so many times that Halliburton has overbilled them. And then the Pentagon still pays them anyway. I don't know who it is that is protecting Halliburton. I don't understand why the military would protect them. If you look at their board of directors, they've got contacts in the State Department, contacts in the military, People who work for Halliburton once worked for the military. When you hire top Pentagon officials, when the vice president is your former CEO, you're going to get the access that other people don't. It is reportedly not a coincidence that Vice President Dick Cheney's old company got a huge contract to help rebuild Iraq. Time magazine said it has gotten a hold of a Pentagon email saying Cheney's office coordinated Halliburton's multi-billion dollar deal. All the revelations came out about Halliburton getting all these fancy no-bid contracts. There was not a single hearing in the Congress, House or Senate, about the mysterious bidding processes around Iraq and Halliburton. 
Um, that's ridiculous. The oversight responsibility belongs to the United States Congress. It belongs here and it's not happening here. The Senate should spend a little less time advertising allegations of wrongdoing and spend more time talking about what is going right. If anybody believes that the contracts handed to Halliburton for Iraq weren't, you know, in the moral equivalent of insider trading, man, I, you know, I, I've got an ocean in the middle of Kansas I'd like to take you surfing on. I mean, it's, it's just phenomenal. I mean, of course they were insider deals. Of course it was payback for, for old, old friends and political supporters and campaign contributors. They're very strategic uh, in how they allocate their political contributions. You'll see most of their money going to the committees that oversee military matters and funding for it. When you pay influence money in the form of campaign contributions, it means people look the other way. The U.S. Army announced today it signed a new contract with a unit of the huge contracting firm Halliburton. You know, the military fights for the guy next to you, or the guy in the next foxhole, who you've trained with, slept with, ate with, spent all your time living with and working with. From the corporate side, it's a question of where's the next contract coming from? Halliburton stock has quadrupled in value since the war began, and taxpayers are being ripped off. The people in charge say, we want to give to contractors because they can do it cheaper. Well, lo and behold, the evidence is now coming in, and it isn't cheaper. And we're not actually getting what we're paying for. We were writing contracts with Halliburton and others to do things that Iraqis could have done better and far, far cheaper. And by the way, we would have gotten Iraqis off the street and given them jobs. Let us stop the war profiteers. Let us say no to them. And let us say, if you continue to, you're going to go to jail because that's where you belong. My amendment would stop them. There hasn't been a single major piece of contracting oversight legislation passed by the Congress since the war began. Not even a significant amendment has been passed, despite all the enormous amounts of fraud and waste and abuse. There needs to be a special committee established, a bipartisan committee, to take a look at waste and fraud and abuse. The amendment is not agreed to. The amendment is not adopted. And the Leahy Amendment is not agreed to. If I had the heads of khaki of Titan of KBR, let's say, what would Thomas Jefferson have to say if he saw the level of profit that had been included in war fighting? What would Benjamin Franklin say? The government of the people, by the people, and for the people is really of, by, and for the companies that are getting the contracts. And that is not the American people. Raytheon, Parsons, and DHB are not America as I know it. Their greed goes against our grain. We have more and more money that are going out to these companies and less and less people watching the federal piggy bank. We need greater oversight in this war, even more than in past wars, because this war has been privatized to a greater extent than any other war in history. I voted for some of these people, OK? Let's see what happens. Let's see if anybody gets in trouble for this. Let's see how many people go to prison. Let's see who loses a contract over this. I know we have a battle ahead from Lockheed Martin to Dynacorp and Bechtel. The profiteers are not going to easily transform into patriots. The people who have the money, the people who are making a profit, have a lot of power and a lot of money and a lot of influence. And so I think it will really take 